You're listening to Covering the Field with your host, Joe Ellison. Welcome to Covering the Field. I'm your host, Joe Ellison. This is where we cover all sports. We bring you predictions and analysis, and we cover all the current events. And today, we're going to start in the NBA. We have in the East, Brooklyn, who is favored to win it all. Uh, They are playing Milwaukee, which swept Miami, who made it all the way to the finals last year. It was expected to be a good battle. Brooklyn is already up to zip. In fact, they won the last game 125 to 86. Uh, That doesn't bode well for Milwaukee. Brooklyn has the big three, Kyrie Irving, Kevin Durant, By the way, Kevin Durant, I'm still mad at for leaving Oklahoma City. That year, they almost beat Golden State his final year. They had a 3-1 conference finals lead, and they blew it. What does he do? Like a coward, he goes to Golden State to win a championship with Steph Curry and Klay Thompson. Totally gutless. Should have stayed in Oklahoma City and should have won it all there. That's no different than a Laker going to the Boston Celtics to win a championship. You just don't do that. And the third member of the trio is James Harden, who forced a trade from Houston during the season. Now here we have the deepest and best bench, the best team, and they will advance, but I'm not going to be rooting for them. In the other side, we have Philadelphia and Atlanta, who both won their previous series 4-1. The story has to be 76er Joel Embiid, whose status was questionable going into this series. But he scored 39 points in Game 1 and 40 in Game 2. Doesn't look very injured right now. The team has a losing record without him. He is certainly the key to this entire series. I expect this to go seven games with Philly winning it. In the West, the story to me has to be the Phoenix Suns who unseated the defending champion Los Angeles Lakers, who appeared to be on paper to be better than last year's team. Certainly they had their injury issues, especially in the form of superstar Anthony Davis. It is disappointing not to have the Lakers still competing, especially since I've always been a Laker fan, but Credit the Suns' defense for winning that series. Certainly the playoffs would be better with the Lakers still in it and much more interesting for everybody, but so be it. That's the way it goes. Now I'm going to jump on the Suns' bandwagon. I figure if they can beat L.A., they should defeat Denver, who went to the conference finals last year, but drop game one to the Suns by 17 in this series. Lastly, in the NBA, we go to the Utah-LA Clippers series, and the favorite in the West now, the team that had the best record in the regular season, the Utah Jazz, who should defeat a Clippers team that went seven games against Dallas in a series where the home team won only game seven. Overall, though, for the championship, unfortunately, I've got to agree with the books that Brooklyn is the best team, and I'm going to figure the best team will win, as often does happen in the NBA, and the Nets will be cutting down the Nets. Moving on to hockey, and the quest for the greatest trophy in North American team sports, the Stanley Cup, where if you win the championship, you get to have your name etched on the trophy, and everyone gets to spend 24 hours with it. I mean, how cool is that? So this year, like every year, the playoffs have already been great battles. Out of 59 playoff games so far, 32 have been decided by one goal, and 22 of those have gone to overtime, with a total of 28 overtime periods. Very exciting, right? But every year, it's the same thing. There were 28 OT games last year. It's just so awesome to watch. As far as uh, the series are going, let's start with the strongest matchup. And that involves the Colorado Avalanche and Vegas Golden Knights, the two best teams in the regular season. 
And a funny thing happened to the championship for Colorado, who going into last Friday had won 11 games in a row and at home had won 13 consecutive and 20 out of 21 and just swept St. Louis, who won the cup just a couple of years ago. In came Vegas, who fought through seven games to get past pesky Minnesota and two days later had to play in Colorado. The Avalanche won that game one, seven to one, and then won game two in, in overtime. Certainly the Golden Knights couldn't overcome that deficit, right? That would mean winning four out of five versus Colorado in order to advance. Well, hold everything. Vegas has now won three in a row, including game five in OT in Colorado. The key stat, an underlying stat, is the fact that Vegas leads the league in block shots. And in game five, a block shot led to the winning goal. I've never been hit by a puck, catting or not, but it takes sacrifice. And that team play will help the Golden Knights advance to the final four. In the central defending champion, Cup champion, Stanley Cup champion, Tampa Bay, got healthy at the right time, right before the playoffs, and will be the number two seed out of the final four after whipping Carolina in five, and will be favored over the East champ, whether that will be Boston or the New York Islanders. And in the East there, Boston was the favorite until a game five victory by New York in Boston. No one can argue Boston is the more talented team, and they still have some very important pieces from their 2011 Stanley Cup winning squad. But New York has the advantage in coaching with Barry Trotz, who has the third most wins in NHL history, and who won the Cup with the Washington Capitals in 2018. As I often say, coaching is the most underrated part of any sport, and coaching is carrying this team right now. In a series that appeared set to go to seven, the Islanders now can finish it off in six. But to me, it's still a toss-up as the Bruins are capable of winning game six and seven. The Bruins have always been my favorite, so I'll pick them, but nothing will surprise me here in this series. And we mustn't forget our neighbors to the North Canada who invented this great game and the Montreal Canadiens who swept Winnipeg after overcoming a 3-1 deficit to Toronto. This really came out of the blue as Montreal was the worst team entering the playoffs. The goalie, Carey Price, has been terrific. Montreal led or was tied the entire series versus the Jets, and now has the longest streak in playoff history without trailing. But continuing that against Vegas or Colorado will be impossible. On paper, it appears Vegas will overcome Montreal in the semis. Tampa Bay should be either Boston or New York. And in the end, Vegas, in their third year, will bring home the Stanley Cup. On to Major League Baseball. In the AL, Tampa Bay and Boston are pulling away in the East. In the Central, the Chicago White Sox and Cleveland look strong. And in the West, Oakland and Houston look like true playoff contenders. In the National League, in the West, the surprising Giants continue to lead the division, with San Diego and the Los Angeles Dodgers close behind. In the Central, the Milwaukee Brewers are on a 9-1 and one tear and now lead the division. And in the East, the New York Mets are the clear leader. As far as predictions go, there's only one sure thing right now, and that's betting on the Mets, Jacob DeGrom, who shuts everyone out. Moving on to football, I guess it's always football season, or it seems it always is. The stories aren't about the games right now, of course, but will Aaron Rodgers be in Green Bay this year? Who knows? He says he doesn't want to be, but he's under contract. That certainly will make, make or break the Packers season this year, obviously. And how about Julio Jones now on Tennessee? That certainly will help. Uh, that will help Derrick Henry in the running game. It will help A.J. Brown, uh, the receiver, from being covered as much. And Tennessee, last I checked, was 40-1. to 1. It will not, be, not surprise me one bit 
If those odds have gone down, now going into some current events, we have uh, the French Open at Roland Garros Stadium in Paris on the men's side. Of course, the story is Rafael Nadal, the 13-time winner here and the big favorite. Uh, he went off at minus 140. Uh, he's not slowing down here. Uh, he did lose a set last year uh, in the entire tournament. He won two weeks ago in the big tune-up, the Italian Open. Unfortunately, he did lose one set this year, but he still looks to be quite the favorite. He will be going up against his old rival Novak Djokovic, but Nadal seems unbeatable. We are going to also pick Stefano Sissipas over Alex Zverev. And in the end, it'll be Nadal winning his 14th. He already has a statue out in front of the stadium. He's going to just keep on adding to those victories. And until we can see otherwise and see him beat, you have to go with Nadal. On the women's side, Iga Swiatek was the favorite, the winner last year from Poland. She never lost four game, more than four games in any set last year at the Italian Open three weeks ago. She double bageled Carolina Pliskova, six love, six love, looked like she was on a mission to win another French Open. Today, she lost to Maria Sapri of Greece. That's going to be my pick now. <laughs> it's sweet. With Sviatek out, anybody could beat her. I've got to jump on that one. So we're going to pick Sapri to win it all. On to the fastest growing sport in the NC2A. That'll be women's softball. Here was Oklahoma, 50 and 2 coming into the tournament, averaging 11 runs a game. Arguably one of the best teams in the history of women's softball. First game out of the shoot in the College World Series, they lose to unseeded James Madison, the Oral Roberts of softball. Remember Oral Roberts run to the Sweet 16 in the NC2A? Well, anyway, Oklahoma lost that game, but then reeled off four wins in a row out of the loser's bracket to make it to the finals. Now they've lost game one to Florida State in the finals. If Oklahoma truly is going to be one of the best of all time, they will need to win the next two games, and I am predicting that they will. So I'd like to thank everyone for listening. Hopefully you all enjoyed the show, and we'll see you next week for another episode of Covering the Field. You've been listening to Covering the Field with your host, Joe Willison, a CM World Services and the Sage Production.